There were more problems for the Pentagon when the initial readings of the Vincennes computer tapes contradicted what they'd just said. These confirmed what the sides had reported. The aircraft in question had been ascending at a steady speed. It should have presented no threat to Vincennes. Even so, when the Fogarty report was published, Iran was pronounced guilty. An examination of the events on 3 July leads quickly to the conclusion that Iran must share the responsibility for tragedy and the investigation so found. By any measure, it was unconscionable to ignore the repeated warnings of the United States and permit an airliner to take off from a joint military-civilian airfield and fly directly into the midst of the ongoing surface action in the Strait of Hormuz, which the Iranians themselves had initiated. We now have a complete report. But in fact, the report was far from complete. A very complex story. It still didn't admit that the Vincennes had been inside Iranian waters. But all the other contradictions were explained away by the concept of scenario fulfillment, a sort of mass delusion. Everybody interviewed in the combat center said that the plane was descending toward the Vincennes. But the electronic record shows it never descended toward the Vincennes. But everybody had that view. I mean, they totally deluded themselves as to the nature of the threat. The scenario fulfillment concept avoided awkward questions. But the reports of the original psychologists who interviewed the crew of the Combat Information Center stated that for six people to share the same delusion was, in their words, highly implausible. The biggest problem you have in doing any investigation is that the guy who commits the mistake, or uh, whether it be an honest error or whether it be uh, um, uh, a grievous uh, error, um, lies to his superiors to cover his own butt. Vincennes returned to its home port of San Diego, it was to a hero's welcome. All the crew were to receive combat action ribbons for their service in the Persian Gulf. In the United States, it's a great place uh, to, to be a military officer. And one reason is that when an incident like this comes along, the vast majority of the American uh, people are going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Four years later, it was first admitted to the American public that the Vincennes had been in Iranian waters. An earlier report from ICAO, the International Civil Aviation Organization, sparked new press revelations. Admiral Crow was asked to explain himself at a hearing at the House Armed Services Committee chaired by Les Aspen. Perhaps at the time of the IKO release, we should have declassified the ship's position and issued a press release pointing out Vincennes' location within Iranian waters at the time of firing. With a prescience of 2020 hindsight, I wish we had done that. Crow read his 26-page statement, then he was cross-examined by the committee. The Fogarty report had stated the chain of events which led to the shootdown began with distress calls from merchant ships. How do you explain, Admiral, the uh, discrepancy that everything started in response to distress calls, and yet the Fogarty report later confirmed that it turned out that there were no distress calls? I don't think I can explain, Congressman. I think he misspoke. Mr. Fogarty? Yes. Uh, I've talked to him about it. He doesn't remember it. Uh, I, I cannot reconcile at time. There were just too many unanswered questions, so the chairman, Les Aspen, decided they needed answering. He appointed Warren Nelson to conduct a new investigation. I spent an immense amount of time, probably the bulk of my time, looking at all the tracks and the various documentation that had been done on the tracks and, and how uncertain that evidence is Evidence which included the helicopter incident that sparked the whole firefight and the subsequent shootdown. In the case of the helicopter, we're basically dependent upon interpretation of people who were in the plane, and, and the interpretations didn't agree. Uh, were, they, were they confused by some reflections? I mean, at the bottom line is, they aren't sure. 
There is no way of saying that they were fired at, definitely. There's no way of saying they weren't fired at. That's just one of these big question marks in history. Most of the question marks could have been cleared up if the airliner's black boxes had been found, crucially, the cockpit voice recorder. The Iranians were out there and, and brought in a, a lot of refuse, luggage, bodies, whole sections of the aircraft they've got on shore, uh, and said they were hunting for the black box as well, and said they never found it. Uh, you know, one line of speculation has been the Iranians found it, discovered there were recordings on a ship showing the plane received the warnings, and therefore destroyed it. I don't believe that, because I don't believe the pilot would ignore the warnings. I mean, it's, it's just too ridiculous. Even if the pilots had heard warnings, they wouldn't have paid attention since their aircraft was not identified. The warnings were addressed to fighter, Iranian F-14, and unidentified aircraft. The Airbus pilots knew that they were none of these. The message sent from the sides just under a minute before the missiles hit was the only one which the crew could have recognised as describing the Airbus. Only the black boxes could prove this one way or the other. They might have shown a message had been received and something done about it, or no messages received at all. If the Iranians didn't recover the black boxes, who else would have wanted them? The BBC, after numerous requests and appeals, finally obtained a CIA document listed as evidence in the official report. It was entitled, Recovery of Black Boxes, Persian Gulf. Every one of the report's five pages was completely blacked out, other than the words secret and no foreigner. So what were they trying to hide? Perhaps the answer lies in a briefing document used in an internal Pentagon inquiry into the Fogarty report. It showed the last few minutes of the Airbus based on the Vincennes computer tapes. It shows the aircraft following the correct commercial air route. Using the correct squawk code, the sides broadcast the only message the Airbus could possibly have understood. At this point, the aircraft conspicuously diverts from its scheduled flight path, away from the warships. A minute later, the plane appears to veer more sharply to the right, onto the course advised by the sides. The missiles are fired and the aircraft disappears from the radar screen. I think, uh, and I believe deeply, that had there been one American on that aircraft, that, that the story would have gone on from there. But sadly, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a macabre way, sadly, uh, there wasn't. And so, so consequently, there wasn't any drive to get to the bottom of the story. And the new investigation, headed by Warren Nelson, simply petered out. Other things seemed more important. The reason why there was no final report is exclusively my fault. We didn't produce any further document, although we wanted to, and, and, and I just, I got bogged down with something else that erupted. I forget what it was. The really sad part of this whole thing, in my opinion, is the, the lack of taking responsibility for what happened. I view the entire affair as a, as a gigantic screw-up. And yet, uh, once we got through the preliminary investigation in Bahrain conducted by Admiral Fogarty, we hear not a word of it from there on out. Um, why is that? Well, I, I find it interesting that, that, um, th that we took no further action. It seems to me it was plain that it was a tremendous mistake, a giant blunder. At that point, it would seem to me that we should have addressed it as a giant blunder, held people accountable, uh, taken corrective action, and, uh, and I believe um, we should have apologized to the Iranians for it. Captain Rogers declined the BBC's request for an interview. He said that while he regretted the outcome, he would do exactly the same thing again in the same circumstances. Captain Will Rogers was awarded a Legion of Merit medal 
for his meritorious performance on the Vincennes. News of the shoot-down stunned in Iran, already worn out by eight years of war. The Iranian leadership was convinced that it had been a deliberate act of war by America, and their suspicions were understandable. It was an undeclared war with Iran. We were in hostile action with their armed forces, and we sank, we sought out and sank uh, Iranian state naval vessels. I mean, to me, that's, that's certainly a, a state of war, whether it's declared or not. Immediately, there were calls for revenge. The official Iranian response was menacing, but unspecific. We will, of course, in due course, have our own response to the American crimes. I do not disclose what kind of response uh, would be from our side, but naturally an appropriate and major response to the magnitude of the crime. Six months later, it seemed possible those words had taken on a truly sinister meaning. When Pan Am 103 blew up over Lockerbie, there was speculation about Iranian extremists, their known links to international terrorist Ahmad Jabril, and revenge. Investigators switched attention to Libya, and the US now seeks not to antagonize Iran as a counterweight to Iraq. But suspicions have lingered. The two Libyans accused of the bombing recently had their trial adjourned. Defense lawyers are reviewing evidence that may shift the focus back to Iran. I think that it's altogether possible that um, that the Lockerbie uh, disaster could be linked to the Vincennes uh, tragedy. And that might not have happened, uh, again, this is speculation, that that might not have happened had we taken the appropriate steps to apologize for the problem and to let the Iranians uh, know that it was, in fact, a giant blunder. I wouldn't say that I think about it every day, but yes, from time to time. Um, it does come back because it set off a chain of events that, that's going on even today. Uh, 290 that were on the civilian airliner, plus Pan Am Flight 103 over Lockerbie, Scotland, killed 270 people. That's a staggering body count. In Washington's Arlington Cemetery, there's a memorial to the Lockerbie dead. They were the victims of terror, but was that terror random or the final act of an undeclared war in the Persian Gulf. If you're on the net and would like to join an online forum about tonight's program with BBC reporter Tim Hodlin, go to abc.net.au slash fourcorners from 9.30pm Eastern Standard Time. Coming up, Media Watch.